I'm Pat Gunn, and this is a commentary on a public spat between Sam Harris and Glenn Greenwald. I'm going to provide a link to where you can get started reading about this at the top of this video description, so if you want to uh, go read up on this first, you'll probably get, uh, get a lot more out of it. Um, the basic the, b the basic conflict here is, uh, so it started when two, uh, two blog posts were made, uh, one on uh, Salon and one on Al Jazeera. I guess blog is not quite the right word. Two commentaries were made, uh, one on Salon, one on Al Jazeera, uh, and they were criticizing Sam Harris and the rest of the new atheists uh, for uh, Islamophobia. Now the term new atheist is a little bit problematic because atheism uh, in in its various forms, including its uh, current forms, uh, it's existed for a very long time and there's nothing particularly new about new atheism. But I suppose uh, it's proven a, a, a useful term for outspoken atheist uh, advocacy uh, as compared to more of the, the quiet, academic, uh, but it doesn't matter type uh, advocacy that you sometimes see. Uh, and generally, I, I don't use the term, uh, just uh, partly because it, it feels uh, inaccurate as terminology and just partly because it seems propagandic. But I, I know the, the people that they're talking about um, and occasionally, uh, bits of the outspoken atheist factions that might be reasonably described by the term have played with the idea. Uh, if you look at, um, uh, what is it, the four horsemen, uh, four prominent atheists, Richard Dawkins, um, I can't remember who the other three were. Uh, they, they've done some uh, uh, they've gotten their heads together and, and talked about various things under the names of the Four Horsemen as a way of playing with this. Uh, anyhow, well, with regards to these two articles, uh, the, the second one was particularly ugly and it, it was digging the idea of scientific racism back out of history like phrenology and all that other uh, widely discredited uh, stuff. And it tried to use the, the fact that this is discredited and offensive uh, stuff to get us to apply that feeling of uh, offense to criticism of Islam. Uh, and I, I think that there's an ugly cultural academic identity uh, in uh, Murtaza Hussein, uh, the person who wrote the Al Jazeera article author, but I'm not going to get too much into that. And I'm not meaning to criticize all of academia. By, by any means. I'm saying that there's a particular like post-colonial studies uh, feel that you'll get to his writing, a sloppiness with facts, uh, an emphasis on emotivity, um, uh, and generally like a third wave kind of Foucault or post-Foucaultian uh, analysis. In my opinion that that style of analysis is almost in intellectually bankrupt. But again, you should look into that stuff. Uh, I'm not certain that you'll reach the same opinions that I have, but I would prefer that you would reach such opinions on your own rather than just accept it uh, because I said it. Um, anyhow, so let me pull up a quote. Uh, so this is the, the bit of Sam Harris that um, that was quoted. Now, the, it was more narrowly quoted than this. Sam Harris responded in the article that I linked you to that provided the full context. So I think I'll read this out and then uh, uh, we'll press onwards. So uh, again, this is a, a Sam Harris quote. Increasingly, Americans will come to believe that the only people hard-headed enough to fight the religious lunatics of the Muslim world are the religious lunatics of the West. Indeed, it is telling that the people who speak with the greatest moral clarity about the current wars in the Middle East are members of the Christian right, whose, infant, whose infatuation with biblical prophecy is nearly as, troubling, uh, nearly as troubling as the ideology of our enemies. Religious dogmatism is now playing both sides of the board in a very dangerous game. 
while liberals should be the ones uh, pointing the way beyond this Iron Age madness, they are rendering themselves increasingly irrelevant. Being generally uh, reasonable and tolerant of diversity, liberals should be especially sensitive to the dangers of religious uh, literalism, but they aren't. The slow failure of liberalism is evident in Western Europe, where the dogma of multiculturalism has left a secular Europe very slow to address the looming problem of religious extremism among its immigrants. The people who speak most sensibly about the threat that Islam poses to Europe are actually fas fascists. To say that this does not bode well for liberalism is an understatement. It does not bode well for the future of civilization. So that's the Sam Harris quote that's seen particular attention by the uh, Al Jazeera article, although it uh, cherry picks, um, uh, or, well, cherry pick is not quite the, the right word. It focuses uh, on a very narrow subquote of this. Now Harris uh, makes the fair claim that Glenn purposefully misunderstood uh, his uh, assertion. He saw it as a problem that the far right is the only group making the claim. Uh, and he did note, uh, as most, uh, as most like, uh, as most secularists generally would, that the uh, that the religious fundamentalists on the right or the the fascists, although I really don't like that word, um, uh, he he makes it pretty clear that they're as much of a problem as uh, as the. Uh, Muslim fundamentalists that he's pointing out are. Um, Glenn, unfortunately, insists on seeing it as praise for, uh, for the far right rather than a sign that liberalism is losing its uh, vision. And there are a few uh, points of this that turn on word choice here. Uh, and unfortunately, neither Harris nor Greenwald really go into the nuance. Harris uses the word fascists. Now, I don't like this word for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, I would prefer to uh, reserve the term for its original historical uh, context, that of a particular political movement in Italy and Germany um, that's, that had very particular views, it had a certain history. Unfortunately, the term fascist uh, is generally used more broadly, and I think inaccurately, uh, in our political discourse. I, I wish we would cut it out. Um, uh, but even if we are going to, to use words like that, or if we need to talk about, uh, about the far right, we should probably distinguish bits of the far right from each other. Like take, for example, Marine Le Pen, uh, far right politician in French politics. I think that you would probably see a big difference between her and uh, between her and her movement, which, by the way, is significantly more moderate than the, uh, than the movement that uh, her father started. I mean, it's the same movement, but under her leadership, it's considerably more moderate. Um, but there's a big difference between that and vigilantes who go around threatening violence or performing violence against people. Um, some of this is is that you'll uh, she general uh, she seems to think that it's sufficient to have different immigration laws and to provide more protection for French culture uh, rather than actually beating people up or anything uh, so crude. Now, I'm not saying that we need to smile upon what Le Pen is doing. Uh, I think that we'd need to actually go through her her beliefs or uh, her party's beliefs or, or any similar party like the, the BNP um, with a fine tooth comb to, uh, to really pick apart what parts of them are problematic and what parts of them are worth talking about. Because I think that Sam has, has a point on this topic. Uh, there's a flavor of liberalism. Uh, there's a flavor of the, of the left particularly those that are really in love with this idea of post-colonialism, of multiculturalism, that are keen to give up on essential features of, of Western civilization, such as pluralism, such as acceptance of, of homosexuality, uh, such as um, uh, 
a firm stand against uh, notions of uh, of actionable honor in society, things like that, and uh, and they've been, uh, those strands are unfortunately willing to give this up because they see that to impose to take a stand against them would amount to cultural uh, cultural imperialism, which they confuse with actual imperial uh, imperialism. And th there are many more things to talk about along those lines. I'm not going to go in depth about that in this video. I might talk about it more in some later video. Um, but I, I think that we need to make those distinctions between uh, between people who are saying liberalism is giving up too much actual accommodation for, for pluralism in its attempt to be friendly towards particular disadvantaged groups. Uh, groups that attempt to favor uh, Western cultural practice uh, versus Western values and those that would use violence against people who don't look and act like them. And there are all sorts of really thorny divides that, that need, to, need to be carefully crossed here if we're really going to do a, a rigorous job. Um, but uh, neither Glenn nor uh, Sam really dissect the language here. And I think it would be helpful to dissect the language and to really get at the, the bits of meaning because both of their discourse is kind of irresponsible. Uh, Glenn's, I think, is more uh, irresponsible in this point. Um, and let, let's go a little bit more into that uh, language. So. Uh, because of the way that Glenn is glossing over language, when Harris uses, uh, when Harris talks about how these far right movements are unfortunately the only ones that recognize an existential threat, uh, uh, Glenn uh, Glenn notes that some far right, or actually this might not be Glenn, this might be Murtaza. I think it's actually Murtaza. Uh, Murtaza. Uh, the, the Al Jazeera article writer, uh, who I mentioned as being kind of problematic uh, above, um, notes that some far-right uh, movements are calling for violence against Muslims and then makes the leap that Harris must approve of such violence. And that's just inaccurate and it's practically libelous. It's a very stupid claim and it's not one that, uh, yeah, I think it's one that Murtaza should retract. Um, anyhow, the, the Glenn Harris exchange continues. Glenn shifts the topic and asserts that secular movements are focusing too much on Islam out of political expediency while reasserting that uh, Harris's statement amounts to praise for fascists. Now, I can see uh, it, there's an unfortunate line of reasoning that, that Glenn is following where it could seem that Sam is praising fascists if one ignores uh, the surrounding context. But I just, uh, I think that Glenn is flat out wrong uh, here. Uh, uh, Sam responds that uh, he and various others have, have offered plenty of criticism uh, of other faiths uh, and that the secular mo movement isn't focusing particularly on Islam. And I wonder if that's true. And I think about Sam's past statements about Muslims, and I think that Sam is on kind of iffy ground here, but except I think that even though Sam might not be willing to consider the point, I think maybe we should consider the point. And in the terms, would it not make sense for secularism to be more concerned about Islam than Christianity? And the reason I say this is that Christianity over centuries has lost a lot of its strength in Western culture. And while there are relatively pure strains of it that, uh, that cause problems, by and large, it's something that we're getting over in the West. And, and so we've tamed it, we've weeded out a lot of the problematic views of it, uh, well, within it, uh, a lot of the problematic practice, um, and uh, it's now relatively safe to be, uh, to not be a Christian, partly because Christianity is so weak in the West. And that's a healthy thing. 
Uh, Judaism, by comparison, has seems to have tamed a lot of its more uh, radical potential very early uh, in its history, or at least comparatively speaking. It was tamed long before Christianity was, although being in the mi minority uh, and always being nervous about other communities might have contributed to that. Islam, by comparison, is it's a comparatively young religion, it's a comparatively strong one, it still has a lot of the problems that uh, these other faiths had in their youth. And, and so it, it poses more of a problem uh, because of that vitality. So I, I think it's, it would be fair to focus uh, more, about, uh, more on uh, Islam except we then have to get into the question of diversity of perspectives within Islam. Being a, a fairly large faith like Christianity, it takes many forms and there are forms of it that are tolerant, that are uh, pluralist, that, uh, that we could uh, coexist with on a tactical level, um, just like Christianity uh, or, or Judaism. And I think we would need to, we, we, we should acknowledge that. Uh, and ev uh, even though we note that there are countries like Saudi Arabia or uh, um, uh, Iran or uh, Qatar or uh, uh, Yemen, uh, where we probably wouldn't find it so easy t uh, to coexist with them unless we're always watching our back. There are countries like Lebanon uh, or Syria before the recent mess um, where they're, they're relatively westernized and people can uh, people who aren't Muslim can feel safe uh, safe and don't feel that there's a boot on their neck uh, and uh, and they're relatively culturally pluralist um, and I, I, I think it would be helpful to uh, to look in, uh, yeah, to, just to remember that. And this is one of the areas where uh, Hirzana Ali, one of Sam Harris's friends, uh, frequently strays into deep uh, deep problems, and that she doesn't acknowledge the gradations, and sees all of Islam as being a high priority enemy. And I just I don't think we should see things that way. I think that we should recognize that countries like Saudi Arabia have deep problems from our perspective and we consider them to be effectively enemies. And we should be wary of uh, uh, private Sharia courts established through the mechanisms of arbitration in Western society. And I think it might be uh, a good idea to prevent that from happening. But that's very different from trying to stomp out Islam. Um, so let's uh, let's also focus on um, on a paragraph that uh, that Sam offers uh, here. Uh, needless to say, there are people who hate Arabs, Somalis, and other immigrants from primarily Muslim societies for racist reasons. But you, but if you can't distinguish that sort of blind bigotry from a hatred and concern for dangerous, divisive, and irrational ideas like a belief in martyrdom or a notion of male honor that ent uh, entails the virtual enslavement of women and girls. You're doing real harm to our public conversation. Everything I've ever said about Islam uh, refers to the content and consequences of its doctrine. And again, I have always emphasized that its primary victims are innocent Muslims, especially women and girls. And in another paragraph, uh, he, he, he talks about honor killings. Uh, as being a, a feature of Islam. And that's an area where uh, where Sam is just wrong. Uh, when he says everything I have ever said about Islam re refers to the content and consequences of its doctrine, honor killings aren't part of Muslim doctrine. They're a cultural matter, and they're one which sees practice among Christians and uh, presumably atheists too in the East, and among non-Muslims in the West. They are a problem but they're not part of uh, Muslim doctrine. And Sam Harris is not, uh, he's being inaccurate and sloppy there. And, and 
I see this as problematic when we see other prominent atheists, including those which I respect considerably more than Sam Harris, um, when they say that they don't need to read the Quran to judge Islam. And the problem is that if you don't read the Quran, if you don't uh, study Sharia at least a little bit, if you don't look to source uh, the claims that you make um, uh, about uh, about these things, uh, as Richard, Richard Dawkins is, is the other person I was uh, sp uh, speaking about there, if you don't bother to do your homework, you're not going to be able to pull apart uh, the general background of Arab society uh, or the other societies um, that we're talking about uh, from the Muslim influence. And so it leads you to making uh, ignorant statements about what Islam is about. Um, and just to give a little bit of background about, uh, about Sam Harris, um, uh, and as compared to Richard Dawkins, so Richard Dawkins is someone who I generally respect. Uh, he he generally has been fair in his uh, in his coverage of secular topics. He's a great science communicator, um, and uh, I his uh, his works, whether they're on the topic of secularism or on the topic of science, they're well written, careful, uh, and you you won't find glaring mistakes. Uh, he he does have a tendency to rant a bit uh, at times, but in general he, uh, he's not particularly uh, directly insulting to people. He will criticize the decisions they make, but he generally doesn't tend to criticize them. And I don't think he's uh, he has a, a particular tendency toward solitary. Um and uh, I guess also he's covered philosophical topics with delicacy. I have a problem with Sam Harris, but, uh, particularly with his work, The Moral Landscape, because it claims to do something which is not philosophically possible. That is, he, he claims to use uh, science to tell us what, uh, uh, to, give, uh, to provide a foundation for uh, morality. And uh, it's essentially an attempt to sidestep the necessary conclusion of relativism, uh, and then to uh, to claim that the moral absolutism that he would create is somehow justified by science. Uh, that's impossible, and it's rubbish, and it's it's a very lazy thing to push on the community. Um, in the same sense that, in general, moral absolutism is a intuitive uh, and lazy conclusion that one has to very carefully pull oneself away from when reaching intellectual sophistication. I'll go into this further in a later video. Um, but trying to, to rescue that uh, the childlike perspective of moral absolutism is profoundly irresponsible, and uh, and as I said, it, it doesn't do science any favors or philosophy uh, any favors in attempting to uh, uh, in attempting to lend the name of science to that endeavor. Um, Sam Harris's work in the moral landscape would be torn apart by a freshman philosophy student. Uh, I'll, I'll go into that in depth in a later video if if it's interesting, but it's it's just trivially wrong and irresponsible and stupid. But on on this particular topic, Sam is I think more right than Glenn, although Sam is not without his faults on the coverage of topics related to Islam. Uh, so that ends this video. Um, as usual, comments are welcome. Uh, please try to keep them intelligent. Comments that are purely insulting or threatening uh, of anybody are uh, will probably be deleted without any notice. But otherwise, I'm happy to entertain conversation on any topics, even if you disagree uh, widely with me. Let's do it civilly. Let's talk about it and go over the details. So uh, that's the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next.